uh, F8 inch shop and today I have a problem and a solution. So I thought um, I better go ahead and post some uh, actual real work instead of uh, just the things that we're buying here in the shop. Um, but this is something that has, uh, has kept, me up, um, uh, kept me up at night quite a few nights. Um, there are several different um, approaches I thought about and uh, this is where I end up. So I'll tell you about the problem first. The problem is I have this, uh, I have this tube. This is a two inch uh, pipe and uh, I believe it's schedule 40 pipe. So what I have to do is uh, I have two different uh, pieces of pipe with two different uh, cuts that I have to make in them. The first one is I need a one inch hole all the way straight through uh, on both ends here and then I need a half inch hole uh, right here on this side. The second one is I need a one inch hole just on one end but it has to be positioned uh, in a different location, in a different place. So um, I thought about several different ways to do this. You know initially I thought maybe I could just put it in the mill and do a um, do a pilot drill or something like that and uh, and then drill it out on the uh, on the drill press um, there's no way that's going to happen for a one inch hole that's you're removing a lot of material uh, on a one inch hole on a round surface so the other thing I was thinking um, the other thing I, I forgot to add is I, I have to do this multiple multiple times so it's got to be repetitive so I got to be able to jig it up um, remove it and then put another one in place and just keep going and drilling through um, and I was wondering if I could build some type of a fixture on my vise, some type of a, a clamp to where when I close the vise I could clamp it down and then drill through. Um, the problem with that though is it has to be, um, I have to be able to turn it uh, 180 degrees around in the exact same spot and drill the other side. So being able to do that on the exact same spot every time and index it in perfectly every time would be hard to do by hand or by eye. Uh, the expensive route I could have take, I could take in, um, would be to would be to buy an indexing uh, chuck or indexing wheel. Um, but those things are not cheap. Um, also, I looked into you know buying one, but I just don't think it would it would have got me everything that I needed. Um, I would have had to do multiple setups and things like that. Um, I also thought about you know making a, a specialized um, jig for this and again it's the indexing issue that I kept having it's how do I index it a perfect 180 degrees and not only 180 degrees but the uh, the one inch hole has to go from from here from left to right and then um, the half inch hole has to go directly on top and it all has to be perfect so um, I struggled with you know how to take this in and out of the vise and get that exact same cut every single time. Um, and this is what I came up with. So here is the solution here. I've, I've been using it. It's, it's pretty messy right now. So this is it. This is what I came up with. This is, um, this is half inch uh, flat stock here. And uh, I, I think this is uh, two and a half inches wide. Uh, two and a half inches wide, and then I, I butt all the corners up. Uh, I placed it on the table, and I got everything completely aligned. I got everything completely um, uh, perpendicular to each other so that every side was even. Then I went ahead and drilled out my one inch holes on both sides and then my half inch hole. So this one uh, fixture here will take care of both, um, I call them operations I guess, uh, both operations. The difference on these one inch holes is that this one is about a half inch uh, from the top and this one is about a quarter inch from the top. Uh, and I needed, I needed those holes positioned that way on the two different sets of pipe. And then, just like I said, you've got your one inch holes 
uh, right here and then directly on top you have your half inch hole right here. Um, once I got everything tacked in place, I went ahead and fully welded it up. I, I got about four or five beads on all these corners. Uh, I had to be real careful that I didn't warp it too much. So I got some really good tacks. Um, went ahead and made one pass all the way around and then fully welded everything up. Um, and I don't think I have it, it warped um, too much at all. Uh, not that it's been, um, it's been an issue or anything like that. One thing that did happen was whenever I welded it, whenever you weld, metal expands when it's, when it's molting and then it contracts whenever it cools down. And so whenever I welded these corners, it contracted and it became a very, very tight fit around this tube here. So this tube's got to be able to slide in and out uh, fairly easily. So when I welded it, I, I welded it with the tube in place. And then I had, uh, I had a little bit of trouble getting this tube outside of the uh, fixture here. It was in there, it was locked in pretty tight. I had to beat it out with a hammer uh, and I knew that wasn't gonna work as far as uh, putting another one in there. So what I did, and I'll throw up a, a quick little video of it. Uh, I put this whole thing in the, uh, in the lathe and uh, I just turned the inside of this just barely giving it a little bit of recess. I'll see if you can see here. Right, right in here. It just, it cut out a little recess for that, that pipe to slide into. And uh, I mean, that's barely anything. It might be a sixteenth of an inch that I cut out. Uh, and it allowed this pipe to sit in here and it allowed it to freely uh, drop into place. The other key thing here is that this is a square block. So because it's square, I can now index this on any side that I want. And I know that whenever I take this fixture out uh, from the vise and put it back in, it's going to be indexed in the exact same place every single time. The key to that though is that this pipe uh, cannot move. You can't allow this pipe to move. Uh, it's got to be locked in. Whenever I stick it in here, it's got to be locked in place. So what I did there was I drilled a couple of holes and I put some set screws in there. You can see these are, are pretty large uh, set screws. I'll lock one in place, just like that. That's locked in place. And now this pipe, it's not going anywhere. So you can see this two inch pipe is now locked into this jig here. And uh, I can drill every single hole out that I need to take it out of the vise and re-drill it. Um, or index it and then drill the other side. So this thing is heavy. I want to say it weighs maybe 15, 20 pounds. It's not light. Uh, but you don't have to, all you got to do is uh, undo the vise and then flip it around so you're not really having to handle it a whole lot. So that is my problem. That is my solution. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this thing in the vise and show you how it works. So this is my setup. I have uh, my, um, my 40 taper here with a one inch annular cutter. Um, so this is what that looks like. And uh, I've tried several different one inch type cutters. I've tried drilling it, I've tried milling it, and I found that the annular cutter uh, did the best because it has this open area so it's only cutting about a quarter inch of the material and it produces a slug. Uh, let me see if I can find one here. Here we go. It produces a slug just like this. So all of this material um, is not getting cut but with the annular cutter. It's just cutting the outside rim. And uh, I found that this uh, 
this thing has uh, it's done really really well for this type of cutting I probably uh, I've done it several probably several hundred times and uh, I'm on my second annular cutter here so and I'll show you what the 40 taper looks like so this is my 40 taper setup right here and uh, it doesn't have this little nipple I had to take that out and screw it into the machine uh, and this is a collet and so what a collet does is a collet looks just like this and uh, your your cutter fits inside the collet you uh, snap your collet in place and then you screw it on tighten it up and then uh, you take this uh, 40 taper you shove it up in the the spindle there and then tighten it up yeah it's very very rigid um, it's it's very strong it has high torque and it's done a, a really good job and the reason why I, I got this machine was because of the 40 taper because eventually when I when I grow up to be a big boy and I'm able to get some CNC machine um, most CNC machines have um, used 40 taper or your mid your mid-range um, CNC machines use 40 taper when you um, when you grow up to be a really big boy you get 50 taper I'll grab one of those and I'll show you the difference so there you go this is what you call a, uh, a real machine shop right here with the 50 taper. Um, this is a decent sized machine shop. And then your hobbyists are basically going to be using your R8, which is what you see on most standard um, on mills. Now don't get me wrong, there's plenty of professionals out there that use R8s. I'm just, I'm just joking a little bit. But you can just see the difference from a 40 taper to a 50 taper. Um, so let's go ahead and get this set up and uh, start making some chips. I've already got my table indexed and I have this stop here in place. All I do is I push this fixture up to the stop and I know it's in the correct position every time. I tighten it down and then I get my, uh, my pipe here and I like to put this seam towards the corner because I, I don't want to cut towards uh, through the seam. That seam, uh, it could be hardened. Uh, it, sometimes it has extra material in there and you don't want your cutter uh, cutting through the seam if you don't if you don't have to. So I always put the seam in the quarter in the corner so I don't have to cut through it. So I load the pipe in from the back, and then I use my uh, angle um, Allen wrench here, and I shove it in so that I make sure it's it's perfectly aligned with the end of the metal, just like that, so that everyone is uh, in the exact same position. And then I tighten down the set screws, just like that. And that is locked in place and I'm ready to, uh, ready to cut. Put a little cutting fluid on there. I've already got my machine uh, set up here. Um, it's going to auto feed. I've got everything set up and ready to go. Um, let me grab my uh, safety glasses and we'll get to cutting this. Now it sounds a little rough at first. But then once it gets through the, uh, the convex shape of that pipe, it cuts pretty smooth after that.
Now, sometimes that slug will get stuck in there. You just gotta pop it out, use a little screwdriver, and just uh, tap it out, just like that. Uh, it's about 50-50. Half the time it's stuck in there, half the time it just drops right on out. So now I'm ready to flip this over, index it to the other side. Alright, that puts me at a perfect uh, 180 degrees and I can cut this other side out. I'll go ahead and show you uh, the setup here. That is a uh, stop, so whenever, whenever it plunges that deep, it will automatically release this lever and stop the feed. See if we're lucky enough to uh, get the slug to drop out. No, it doesn't look like it. Well, maybe it did. I don't see it. Now I just need to de deburr that real quick. Got my deburring tool here. Get all those uh, those edges out of there. There you go, setup number one, setup number two. So, um, like I said, we've got uh, the two holes just uh, spaced differently, and uh, then we've got the half inch hole down here. So, if you wonder about what keeps me up at night, which I'm sure you don't, um, this is it. This is the kind of stuff I think about when I go to bed and uh, how I'm gonna accomplish it the next day. So I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with this setup. Is it ideal? Um, I would say no. Is it better than CNC? I would say no. But is it good for a, uh, a short run of a, of a few hundred parts? Um, I say it's not a bad way to go. So uh, I'm happy with it. It's repeatable. It's, uh, it's precise, as precise as I need it to, to be. And uh, it's been uh, good on my tooling. So I, ha I haven't had to use uh, too much tooling um, to get this done. So uh, be creative, think outside of the box, and go build something.